You got your mama's sunshine. You got your daddy's rain. You're like a piece of heaven in a hurricane. Hey, welcome to this week's podcast. I'm Josh Vietti. Uh, we have a special guest with us today. We have Pastor Tom Hollenbeck, Hello. and uh, along with Pastor Ron Vietti, Vincent Sierra. Hey, uh, Tom, you're yeah. you're also a Tom, but you're not the original uh, regular Tom. <laughs> you're the younger, uh, yes. more facial hair Tom. Yes, yes, I am. So, uh, what do you do? Tell us what you do. Uh, I am in, uh, so at VBF, we have a campus called our Northwest Campus, and uh, I am in charge of that location and kind of just the facilities, the Sunday mornings and how it operates and like the behind the scenes stuff. So So if you're ever in Bakersfield, if you don't live here, if you do live here and you want to visit Northwest, uh, service times are 9 and 11, you get, come meet Tom. Would love to meet you. He's a good guy. And uh, out um, off of Coffee Road, what's the address? 6228 Coffee Road. That sounds correct. I'm not, it is correct. That seems right. Okay, cool. Correct. So today uh, we're going to talk about uh, anger. We're going to talk about anger management because we all get angry, right? We all have moments where we uh, lose it, where Mm -hmm. we get upset, where we feel that heat. And uh, you know that a reaction is coming after you feel that heat, after something happens or. You know, sometimes um, it can build up slow. Sometimes it's not a, uh, you know, specific moment in time that sets you off. Sometimes it can build up slow over time, and there can be kind of a a deeper uh, kind of anger that you hold on to. Um, I was, uh, I'll tell a quick story, and we can go from there. But my wife and I, I was just telling this story to some of the tech guys over here, but my wife and I were on our way to a uh, child's birthday party. And I turned from the gas station. Apparently, I cut a guy off, and he comes around me, and he starts yelling and cussing at us. And all of a sudden, my wife and I are both just full-on yelling at this guy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. he tried to hit us with his car, uh, and it was terrible. It was was really embarrassing. And then, uh, literally, we're on our way to a children's birthday party. We have balloons in the car, okay? And uh, and we both kind of laughed, but we were also like, what is going on here, right? What was it that set us off uh, and, and made us angry during this time? So we've all had moments like that. The story is actually a little bit more colorful, but I, I'm going to try to keep it, you know, PG here. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, sometimes we get mad and we lose our temper. But how many of us lose our tempers in our own home? Right, right. With our kids, with our spouses. Uh, those are not, those are the stories we don't want to tell, right? Yeah. Um, you know, how many of us, uh, have been upset in the car? How many of us have been upset on a vacation that doesn't go right? Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe it's something that comes out of nowhere. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's just a fight that you have with somebody. Uh, anger comes in, in many forms, in many sizes. Uh, and so today we're going to talk about, you know, how can we learn to, I don't know if control is the right word. Right. Control, uh, channel it. Uh, channel is a good word. Keep yeah. it under control. I, I should be... How a, do we manage it? I mean, that's what we're talking right, about, anger yeah. management today. So what do you guys think? I should be a a real, you know, professional speaker about anger because I dealt with anger, oh gosh, most of my life, especially my younger years. I mean, I had anger that was out of control. And uh, my wife had to put up with me for years before I came to the Lord and started my journey with him. But I mean, I had uncontrolled anger. Uh, I'm kind of embarrassed to even say what I did, but it was nothing for me to clear a table like this. If somebody said something I didn't like, I would just take my arm and just clear the whole thing. Wow. And throw a chair across the room and walk out. And, uh, you know, and it's uh, other things I did that I don't even need to bring up. But see... Anger can be a habit, and I know when I was younger, I used anger because it worked for me to a certain degree. Uh, people were afraid of me. If I wanted to get stuff done, throw a little anger, anger fit, and you know what? They'd scramble. They'd do what I wanted them to do. It's a terrible thing to look back and know that that was why I used anger, but I used it to control people. I thought my wife might be unfaithful to me or flirt with other guys, and I thought, I'll make her so angry or I'll make her so afraid of me by my anger that she would never dream of doing that. And and I think it's a real sign of immaturity. But nevertheless, we don't know who we're speaking to today. And uh, we think our anger works for us, so we use it. That's mm. why we keep using it, because it's working, we think. But in the long run, it does not work. It backfires on you, and it's a horrible thing. See, uh, 
I think we're all drug addicts. We, we get down on drug addicts today, and, and sometimes we look at them in a way that uh, we kind of make them, you know, less uh, valuable people than people who aren't on drugs. But we're all drug addicts. Um, for example, when we get angry, our body releases adrenaline and, and cortisol, and that's a drug. Um, and so sometimes I think we even get more hooked on the drugs mm. that, that are, are infiltrating our body uh, than we do with the understanding of why we're getting angry. Do you think that that's a do you think it's a, a male thing or is, do you think that's both male and female? I think it's more male because of the testosterone and the way we're wired. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, uh, I think there are people out there that could be listening today that you've got in a habit of living with anger. Mm-hmm. And because of the drugs that it releases in our body, you're a drug addict. And you will go around and try to find things that make you angry. Hmm. You start your day off, and and it's probably subconscious, but you start your day off thinking, you know, I've got to find things to get angry about. And you don't even know why you're doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, we're going to talk a lot about this, but moodiness can be tied to anger. I was a little moody yesterday and today, and I thought, why am I moody? And I started thinking, it's vacation time. And my wife does not want to do anything on vacation. Hmm. And I started thinking, man, my family here, they're going to Hawaii. Some of my family is in Africa now, and they're stopping by Italy. And I started thinking, I want to do something on vacation. And my wife doesn't want to do anything. So I just went out and booked myself a ticket to Bahamas. I'm going next week. <laughs> wow. uh, not really. Not really. <laughs> uh, like, no. But, but there's, so no. Much, there's so much to say about anger. And let's just kind of start here. Um, when we learn to channel our anger, it becomes a powerful tool. But suppressed anger can be very, very destructive. Mm. That's why the Bible says, almost in a command way, be angry, but yet do not sin. sin. Right. And because I think that that it's very important for a man specifically to be in control of anger, um, because I do think anger is a tool. Um, uh, Jordan Peterson says that... um, Men, we are supposed to be monsters, but we should learn how to control it because there's this idea that we're the protectors of the home. We're the protectors of our family. Um, You don't walk around being angry everywhere that you go, but you need to have that that monster inside of you that is able to... Mm -hmm. You know, if someone, you know, begin, you know, because we have the, the we right. live in a crazy world. And so right. you've got you've got it wherever you go with your kids. You've got to be alert. You know, you can't just be a, a dad who's stuck in his phone thinking that the world isn't out to um, um, take care of him and pr- provide for him. Sure. And so, you know, being able to protect your family when the opportunity arises or being able to defend yourself when the opportunity arises, not that we walk around ready to use these these right. qualities but it needs to be under control and it's not that you know you use it when your kids do something uh, it's not that you use it but it, it it is a tool in your arsenal um of being a man and and that's what i've seen over the years is just you know these men who you know pop off real like you said pastor that it shows the sign of their maturity as to whether or not they have it under control because you're right the bible says be angry But why would we need to be angry? Well, there's a balance between your primal self and your spiritual self, right? Your primal self is the things that you naturally, you're going to get angry. People will make you mad. You're going to get sad. You're going to get happy. You're going to have all these emotionals, right? And that's your primal self. That's, we talk about the primal man, which I think what Jordan Peterson is kind of referring to, like by nature, even the Bible talks by nature, this is kind of the things that you'll, that you'll do, but your spiritual self at some point, which I'm sure we'll talk about later on in the podcast has to be able to override that primal stuff. I mean, think about, well, think about, um, um, like, um, you know, cavemen, right? If they didn't have anger, if they didn't have a reason to get mad and fight, right? Um, they might've died a lot. We might not be here today podcasting, right? Because they didn't learn to defend themselves and get angry about the right things and use that tool constructively. So they had to be able to figure out how to fight and be angry and do, do good with it. But then that got out of control, right? Because then they were killing each other. They were, they they, they did a lot of bad in that. So it's like, then the spiritual self comes in the self that should be more aware 
and help control that primal self. Well, you know, that you're you know how we about. got fire, right? There was a guy who was sharpening his sticks and he was so angry about it that he kept doing it until fire came. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I mean, that sounds good to me. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. It's it possible. Uh, angry is, anger is an interesting emotion and it's part of our emotional complex, right? It's mm -hmm. part of uh, who we are as people. And there are times where we're, I mean, Ecclesiastes talks about it, where there are seasons for different types of emotions, right? Times to be sad, times to be, uh, you know, glad, times to be angry. There, there, are, there are specific times to be angry. I think of Jesus, and I think of the disciples, and I think how they followed him, and he's healing people, and he's giving people food, and he's uh, speaking to crowds. Well, at one point, they walk up on him, and he's making a whip. Mm -hmm. Jesus, what are you doing there? Making, yeah, making what, are you, a whip. what are you doing there, man? What, yeah. What's going on? Uh, what, what are we What are we getting ourselves into? Yeah. And uh, I, I bet he was quiet when he was making that whip. I yeah. bet. I it bet was he was quiet. Anger. It was controlled. He was sitting there going, "I'm going to handle this." Yes. yes. You yeah. know. And he went in and he tossed over the tables and um and and the context of that was that they were using his father's house, the the temple for. Uh, things that it wasn't supposed to be used for. Yeah, they were making money off I, the sacrifices. Right, right, right. Yeah. It was and, and a good, good, good anger was. can be a motivational factor, as you was, you were saying. It motivates you. It's incredibly useful and and uh, productive if it's used right. For example, um, very often, probably hardly not a week goes by that my wife Debbie won't tell me. She'll say, "You know what? If you eat what what you're fixing to eat right now, you will be so." angry at mm. yourself all tonight. You'll be angry. And that's true. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was a defining moment for me when I went into the hospital and saw my father and my brother. They they each had a couple heart bypass, bypass surgeries. When I saw them with their chest sawed open, I saw everything that that was the result of this open heart surgery. I saw the tubes all going in and out. Right there, I had a defining moment, and I got angry, and I said, that is not going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. It will not. I'm not going there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got angry. Yeah. And well, in that anger, I went out, and I said, I'm going to start dieting and extra. I'm going to keep yeah. my weight down because I'm not going to end up where they ended up. Because anger is a tool. It's it, a tool. It's, it's meant to be used it's as a tool, a tool 100%, well, and not define who you are. You're not an angry person, but it's a tool in yeah. the arsenal. Yeah. Well, anger, anger should be a short term emotion. It should be short. It ought to be, yeah. uh, you know, as soon as you feel the anger coming on, you ought to pray, what should I do with this right now? Mm -hmm. How can I rechannel this? Mm -hmm. How can I use this to be productive? It shouldn't stay there for a long time. You never yeah. see guys in the gym that have big muscles that are lifting heavy weight doing it passively, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, whatever. I'm yeah. just going to lift this. No, yeah, it's right. almost like they have to fire themselves up yep. and get, you know, like you said, if somebody, if somebody breaks into your house, yeah. right? Yeah. You're you're not gonna be like, oh man. Let me get there. Hold oh, on. Oh man. Yeah. Right. Right. You're gonna be yeah. fired up, and right. you're gonna go into full protection and you mode. You should be. And 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 you're gonna be. Angry. Well, right now I'm going through a situation with a, a parishioner, and this person is really giving me a hard time. And the other day I was busy texting messages and and trying to answer people with, uh, or I was trying to answer people concerning what was going on, and I found out that I I was late for one appointment. I had to cancel another appointment all because of this one person who was getting under my skin. And all of a sudden I got real angry, angry enough to go pray. And I said, God, right now I give you this situation. Mm. Lord, you handle it. I do not want to be late for any more appointments. I don't want to miss any more appointments because of this person. And so again, anger can lead yeah. you to productivity. Mm -hmm. Huntington uh, swam Valley this year and he's a sophomore and he went to the event. You have to taper, which means like basically you do nothing. And then when you, when you make Valley, um, you're supposed to swim your fastest. Well, they tapered the week before so they all can make Valley, which was a good plan. And then the week of Valley, he kind of slowed down a little bit, a couple sec or not a couple seconds, like a second. And so I, you know, I was really encouraging, like, I'm so proud of you, son. And, you know, and then he was mad. He's like, I swam worse. You know, I was really, and, and, and my wife was just like, are you going to correct him? And I was like, no, I'm, a, I'm okay with him being mad. Cause I know that he cares. Mm -hmm. Like, and I know that he'll use like right now in this moment, he's upset you know, it's an individual sport, so he's not affecting anybody. But for him to be able to wear that anger in a way that he knows that he can do better was I was I was OK with that, because as long yeah. as he takes what's which we'll talk about more in this podcast, as long as he takes that anger and does something great with yes. it. Right. Um, that's that's going to be what matters. Yeah, well, right. I had a guy in the church. This is decades ago. And he got upset at me because he thought that I'd counsel his wife to leave him, which I did not do. And this guy was kind of crazy. He started coming into church services. And he walked in one day and had a fist fight, a sh real short one in the back. He started throwing a couple blows at one of our, our leaders. 
And he started calling my house all the time, and he would try to intimidate me. He would tell my wife, said, you know, when's uh, Pastor Ron going to give you the Kool-Aid and have you drink it? And you know what? And he just kept intimidating me. He uh, left a, a broken picture of him and his wife on their wedding day on my office porch one day. And he said, I'm watching every move you make, and I'm going to get you. And so for a month or two, he would come in the church service and stare me down. Uh, he would come in and cause a little situation in the back. He threatened me and threatened me. And it came to a place to where I couldn't even preach hardly. I would get very nervous when I was preaching, thinking he's going to come in here. He's going to do something. One night he said, I'm coming to get you tonight. And he was driving around the church. We called the police. Anyway, this went on for a couple of months. Finally, one day I saw him coming across the street and I, I just got so angry. I ran. I bumped chests with him. I put my head in his face. And I said, you know what? This isn't going to happen anymore. I'll tell you what, I'm going to pray that God kills you. And I kept pushing him, pushing him, pushing him. This dude took off running back to his car yelling, you're crazy, you're crazy. I never saw the guy again, ever. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if that's a good example to use or a bad one. <laughs> but I got so angry going, I can't even preach a sermon anymore. Right. I know. can't concentrate on God. Yeah. Uh, we can't even worship in here without fear that this guy's going to bust through the door and do something. It was the protection of the people. And I saw you in Mulahe one time. We went. We used to go down to Mulahe as a church, and one day hopefully we can again when it's you know when it's a little bit easier to get Mulahe down there. Mulahe is halfway down Baja. Yeah, you have to drive. Side. It's really hard. Really to get cool there. spot. Yeah, though. really cool spot. We minister to the people. I remember this one particular trip. This guy was following us, and he was. I would definitely say he was up to no good, and. And we would see him everywhere we went. He, we, we turned the corner, and there he was. And finally, I, for the protection of the people, Pastor, you walked over, and you stood him up. And this guy could have been cartel. You walked across the street, and you said, you will not keep, <laughs> you will not keep doing that. I was mad. It. I was you so were mad. so mad. But, you, you know, it was. I think it was out of a good place because you were worried. We had. I think we had like 40 or 50 people there, and you were just really worried that at some point we were going to be taken advantage of or that they were going to try to do something. And I didn't see that guy ever again no, that trip. No. I'll tell you what. <laughs> he was well, gone. We were driving out of town, and I saw him. I said, stop the van, stop the van. Yeah. And and it was. It was a point to where this intimidation had to stop. Stop, right. And I don't like bullies anyway. Mm -hmm. And I did it in Jesus' name. I just said, in Jesus' name, I'm going to ask God to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't I hear what you man. said, but I you said, were on him. Yeah. I know someone took a picture, and I had him by the collar, and I was mad going, call your goonies off. This is the game's over. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Well, and, something uh, I, something I do, I've got a, I've got a two year old son and, and he's throwing temper tantrums every now and again. And he'll, he'll stomp his feet. He'll smack his hands. He'll do all these different things when he's not getting his way. And even at two, I'm looking at him and I'm going, son, did you accomplish anything good with this <laughs> anger that you're doing? And he goes, no. And I said, then, then just calm down. Tell me what it is that you want, because sometimes that is what people do. They'll throw things, they'll break things, they'll say things, they'll do all these negative things with this anger, and it gets them nowhere right. where they wanted to go. It's solved nothing, right. but anger can be used to solve you know, problems in, in good ways, like like the, the examples that you guys were sharing. Like it's, well, some people don't, and, and um, I was in this position before where... I was dealing with some uh, issues, as I've talked about on this podcast many times before, but um, one of those issues was anger. And I did want to get out of a cage I felt like I was in. I felt like I was stuck and I couldn't get out. But that whole uh, situation was was more of a construct of my own mind. Like I thought, I'm stuck. I can't go anywhere from here. And so I was more like a, like a, uh, like a lion that got cornered and didn't want to fight. I would rather run, but I couldn't, and I felt like I couldn't. And so I just, I lashed out, right? Um, uh, it was a, it was a weird situation. Uh, but sometimes anger can, can be a byproduct of just not knowing what you want mm -hmm. uh, to, to speak on sure. what you're talking right. about. Uh, it's funny. I was talking, you made me think of my daughter who's three years old and she's, uh, she's, what would you call my daughter, dad? She's feisty. She's <laughs> the <laughs> she's youngest not, one. Yes. She's a bit feisty. And uh, she's got her, she's got her emotions, you know, and, and uh, it was funny because today I was preparing for this podcast and I was watching a video 
And she's like, Daddy, what are you watching? I was like, I'm watching a video about being angry. And she's like, oh. I was like, are you ever angry? She's like, no, never, you know? And, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and in her little mind, she's not, you yeah. know? She's not angry, but she doesn't understand the difference between being angry and and her little bursts of temper and yeah. uh, being upset, like you said, trying to get get your way. Yeah. Um, I think as adults, though, we do the exact same thing. We get upset when we don't have our way or we expect something to go a certain way and it doesn't go that way mm -hmm. or we're trying to get something done and it doesn't work work out and we get upset and it might come out like you said dad in a mood yeah it might come out right yeah uh, in depression. a very small depression it can come out yeah it can come out in a lot of different uh ways anxiety uh but sometimes you know if enough of that builds up then it, you know those emotions if they build up and you do nothing with them mm. yeah. they will yeah. ultimately either destroy you from the inside out or it'll cause you to really out, uh, have outbursts. Aren't we always called to be examining our life? Wasn't it Socrates who said an unexamined life is not worth living? Mm. So if we take our anger and, and do something productive with it, it's really cool. For example, mad mothers against drunk drivers. How did that all start? Yeah. A lady whose daughter was killed by a drunk driver, and that made her very mad mm. that people could go out there and drink and take other people's lives. And so she started uh, the uh, very whole positive movement. Mad. Very yeah. positive movement. Yeah. So some people think that because they never get angry, that means they're mature and they're godly people, and they, they pride themselves in that. But I, I don't think that uh, people who, or let me rephrase that, today I'm having a hard day. I, did, I have no caffeine in me at all today. I woke up very tired, and I should have drank a coffee on the way over here. See, well, I told you we're all drug addicts, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But some people think that, you know, I, I, I never get angry. Well... I'm not so sure that you should be proud of that uh, because uh, very often I think uh, because we're made in the nature of God in his image, uh, we need to get angry. And mm -hmm. I think people who say, I never get angry, of course, we're all wired differently, and I know we show our anger differently, but if you say, I never get angry, I'm not so sure you're the person that's going to ever get ahead in life in, in a lot of uh, ways. Uh, God created us with emotions. God gets angry in the Bible, and we're made in his image. Uh, now, there's an unhealthy anger, and there's a healthy anger. Example, any anger that that leads you into sin, and just for today, let's use the working definition of sin as missing the mark. Mm. Any anger that leads you into doing something or saying something that misses God's mark for your life, that that is going to be destructive. I mean, flipping somebody off, cussing somebody out, throwing mm -hmm. things, hitting people, losing the control of your emotions— we must learn how to rechannel our anger. Where do we where do we go? How how would somebody learn how to do this? Because, you know, my wife and I when when we got married, we didn't know how to argue with each other. And that was something we needed to learn earlier on in our in our marriage and and you know, there's people that maybe they've never cuz I you know, in doing funerals, majority of the time when you're speaking with gentlemen, you know, hey, sir, how are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm doing good. I'll be, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. No, we're supposed to mourn. We're right. supposed to be sad, yeah. and 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 not forever, but there is a, an appointed time. And so, how do we learn to control our anger, or where do you go to find out what is right or what is wrong? Especially if you're an adult who maybe your parents never taught you something like that. Right. I, I think the first step, Tom, is you have to acknowledge it. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, they lie to themselves and say, I'm not angry. Right. You know, this doesn't bother me, whatever it might be. And, and when they do that, they suppress, they bury it. Right. And it's like, uh, they say it's like a balloon, right? Underwater. Like you're blowing it, like a, you have a balloon and you're blowing it up and, and eventually, right? Or not, I'm, those are two different things. Sorry. The balloon, <laughs> the balloon, you blow it up, eventually it pops, right? Uh, the other one was a beach ball. Uh, the, the idea with angry is, is every time you suppress, you push it down in, uh, further down into the water and ultimately you, you can only, to, get, you can only right. go down so far before it comes back up. Right. Um, and so you can't suppress it. You have to be honest. I think as men, we sometimes get our feelings hurt. Yeah. yeah. If we're honest, we get our yeah. feelings hurt. Well, probably all the time. Or we be, yeah. or we're jealous or, sure. you know, these emotions that right. aren't very becoming, they're not, they're, you know, they're kind of embarrassing. Right. But like we have these emotions, we have to acknowledge them. We have to be honest right. with ourselves and say, this bothers me right now. Yeah. So it's like, what do you do with that before it becomes a toxic okay. anger? I think that's something every person has to figure out for themselves through trial and error. First thing is, I think we should all do if we're Christians 
you go to prayer as soon as you can, and you pour your heart out to God. But there are other people uh, out there that maybe after you prayed, you found other things to be... Can I say something about prayer real quick? Can I, so, let me finish this. Yes. Let me finish this real no, quickly. Don't, don't get angry. Okay. Go, 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 hit, a, go hit a punching <laughs> bag. Right. Go yes. work out. Right. Yeah. Uh, vent to someone. And I want to, you go ahead and say what you're going to say, and I'm going to come back to that venting to other people. That's another way you can deal with your anger at the moment. No, I'm good. Let's just keep going. Okay. Would you say that this is for both male and female? I think it's for both. Uh, I have three people I can mention. Nicole Dickey's one, Mike Maggard's one, and then my wife, obviously. When I get really angry, I discharge my anger a lot after I pray. I try to pray first. I go pray, and then I go vent myself. That's good. To one of these people. To a safe place. And I do the vents quite a bit. And yeah. I say, thank you for letting me vent. Yeah. Because very often you need to get this out of you, what's in you. And first of all, through prayer, I go to God and I just say, God, right now I'm very angry. And I I, have, I, I pray like this sometimes. God, right now, I want to go punch him in the nose. I want to <laughs> get this thing over with. God, you created me this way. You know how I am. Yeah. You know me in and out. You know what what uh, I have a weakness with and, and where my strengths are at. And so I'll just, to God, I'll say, God, right now I'm just angry. Help me, help me, help me. And I'll vent myself to him. Then afterwards, if I still feel I'm angry, I'll call one of these three trusted people and I'll say, hey, can I talk to you a moment? This is going on. I just need some help. I need some prayer right now. And I might talk for 10 minutes and then I finally realize, hey, I feel a lot better now. Thank mm -hmm. you for letting me vent myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember what I was going to say. What I was going to say about prayer is when I'm, this is me personally, I don't know if you guys feel the same way. When I'm angry, I don't want to pray. Like I'm, I, I'm angry and I don't want to pray. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this right now. And it makes, and it, and, and it's not, you know, so it, it would be easy to say, well, suck it up, do it anyway. Right. But I, if I don't want to, I'm not going to do it. So right. what I do is I have like little things that I will uh, do to reset my mind <clears throat> to get myself into a place where then I can pray about it. So I will go for a walk or I will go for a hike or I will, uh, it's, it's silly, but you can actually take a pack of ice and you can put it behind your right. neck. Or, and, or they say ice cubes in your hands and, too. And yeah. So yeah, like temperature change. Yeah, like yeah. There's all, all sorts of things you can do and you can look this up on the internet, but there's all, all sorts of things you can do to reset your mind and kind of just get the emotion part mm -hmm. of it out of the way. Because, you know, even if, um, you know, the motion is, is, is gone for a second, you can suppress an emotion. It doesn't mean that the issue's gone. And so I'll do something to kind of reset and then I'll come and be like, why did this kind of yeah. like the aftermath of it? It's like after your kids fight, you say, okay, let's get together now that the emotions are settled down right. and let's talk this through. <clears throat> I do that to my, with myself. I'm like, okay, what happened there? And that has been a huge thing for me because before I would just ignore it once because once the emotion goes away, mm -hmm. you think, oh, it's solved. Not a right. problem anymore. But you're not really tackling the heart or the root of the issue mm -hmm. of what made you angry in the first place. There you go. Right. And if you don't do that, it's like you're not doing anything good. You have to uh, you have to tackle it. You know, I, so like the scripture says, that same scripture that you said uh, right. in Ephesians, uh, it, it, it talks about uh, not letting... Uh, well, it says, be angry, do not sin. It also says, don't let the sun go down in your anger. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to me, uh, you used to say, you know, people will say, don't go to bed angry. Well, okay. Well, to me, if it happens after dark, you have a full 24 hours because it's don't let the sun go down. Anyway, <laughs> semantics. <laughs> but but the idea is, but but seriously, the idea Loopholes. is, yeah, but the idea <laughs> is you have, you have, you have a short amount of time to acknowledge it. Sure. Because right. you'll forget. You'll yeah. forget what you're doing. You'll forget what you're trying to accomplish. Oh, I've been yeah. there. And you won't be able to attack. Very I've often, been there. very often, yeah. we don't even know what we're angry about. No. Right. And yeah. I, I'd written a note down here while you were, before you said what you said. We need to somehow, sometimes stop and consider what we're really angry about. I'm really in a bad mood. Well, there's a reason for that mood, probably. Depression yeah. is sometimes anger turned inward. Mm -hmm. uh, anger doesn't exist in a void. Pray and ask God to reveal to you what you're mm -hmm. angry about. Uh, spend some time. If you have to get away for an hour and say, I got to yeah. just talk to God for a while. I'm in a, I'm in a bad mood today. I feel angry and I don't even know why. I don't even know why. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a reason. And we have a lot of information at our fingertips now. I remember for the youth, uh, we were going over the different emotions and there's online, there is a, um, like a thermal scan of the body during different emotions mm -hmm. and during depression, uh, the, the, the body is majority like blue or cold. Um, but specifically with anger, all of the heat is in the hands. Mm -hmm. All of the heat 
is centered right in the fists. And it's interesting because when you think about it, like how yeah. you were describing, you would, you know, move the table. People, when when push. trying to compete for something, yeah. yeah, they'll push or they'll punch or like mm -hmm. how, you know, the I example. Yeah, <laughs> sure. but you you didn't know this information and you said some people put ice cubes in their hands Yeah, which is just it's just yeah, interesting because down, yeah. cause when we know when we know some of these characteristics because I think I, One of my knee-jerk reactions is to like hit something or push my my hmm. daughter did something the other day And I remember I just smacked my hands together and I, I was like, oh wow Why is that a knee-jerk reaction, right? <laughs> it's just I don't know what it is about it, but it that's I'm information a, I'm a stonewaller. I just like once I get mad I just psh, I just stop, like, because I don't know, and that's not good either, right? Because you stop uh, doing that. But I want to talk about the venting for a second. I want to go back to that because um, you talk about venting to people, and I think that is a, a healthy thing. But it has to be with people that you trust, like you said. You have a small group of people because venting can also, if you're showing up to a small group and you're just venting your life or venting something that happened or you're mad at something, that you're, that's not venting. That's gossip. And yeah, there's a yeah. difference between vent. Mm -hmm. And gossip and so you if you're showing up and you're just like well it's okay to vent well that's not vent that's not venting you're doing something destructive and so right. the anger shouldn't turn to destructive that's my point the other thing um that i wanted to say about the anger is too i think for a lot of us you know you're asked how like how can you recognize this and it's funny because you can kind of see people who you know that get angry once in a while when they get angry the the it kind of the whole room stops because it's not like them it's out of their character and then there's people that live on edge all the time. And mm -hmm. I think you know you have an anger issue is when you're constantly, when every little thing sets you over the edge. And, yeah. I, and I think if you're somebody and you're listening to this podcast and um, you might just be angry by what I just said because I said every little thing sets you over the edge and that made you angry, yeah. you might have an anger issue. You might have something that you have to resolve, that you have to take the prayer, that you have to get help for because little things, you know, shouldn't set you shouldn't turn into big things they shouldn't have that much power over you and when they when they do then you know that's when anger so can dad, really overtake you dad yeah. you and i have shared a lot um with each other about anger because it's probably safe to say that it, there's a hereditary issue in our family right uh something that your father passed to you something that you've passed to me we've dealt with it we've talked about we've talked about this a lot and when you told me that it was a habit a while back um that that resonated with me uh because i thought it was good news because I thought, well, if it's a habit, a habit can be changed. Yeah. I have, I have a lot more, uh, right. And so, um, there's a lady named Lisa. I've taken this further and there's a lady named Lisa Feldman Barrett, Lisa Feldman Barrett. She wrote a book called how emotions are made. She has a talk on Ted talks, which is like 17 minutes long. I encourage you to listen to it. Uh, but she also wrote the book, how emotions are made. And her whole thing is she says that we, uh, that mo emotions are predictions, so like think of the day where you're driving down the road and you're and you someone cuts you off and you just lose your mind, right? You lose it. Or your wife says something or your husband says something to you just and immediately you give it. It's because you were kind of already expecting. You're already thinking negatively. Mm. You're already going down a road of like everything is terrible. Everyone hates me. Everyone's out to get me. Right. And you're already basically predicting that you're going to be angry. Right. And when, you, and when you're in that mindset, something little happens and it sets you off. Yep. And some people live right. in that mindset. They, they live in the mindset. And it's a stressful place well, to be. I want to go back to what Vince said, too, about venting to other people. I have two people that I vent to, and I don't just vent to gossip. I tell them, I'm angry today. Here's an issue. Would you pray? And my whole idea is pray for me right now. Encourage me help me because I'm having a hard time getting over this. Usually I don't have to do that because once I vent to God, I'm usually okay 90% right. of the time. But there's times where I, I need these prayer people. Well, and again, it can turn into gossip yeah. quickly. And I'm only talking about two people. Right. And that's after 50 years of in ministry. And, and these are people that people. you're super close to. Super I know close you to and I have had some conversation trust. and we've known each other for over right. 30 years. And we have conversations. You let me vent to you, which I appreciate, yes. where I said, I have hard time and I'm going through a thing. And you go, okay, that's it. We'll end it there and nothing gets said. So it's like you have to have people that are safe. Um, but then again, you know, growing, going to a group of people that you don't know and just being like, let me tell you oh, everything yeah. went bad. That's not what we're talking that's not, about. Well, you know what? Again, uh, I used to have a bad habit. I guess it was passed down from my Italiano side. But when I was young, before I came to Christ, and a little bit even after I came to Christ, I get mad and I throw something, just throw some. And as soon as I did, I felt better. Mm. I thought, well, I feel better now. You know, I threw that, I got it out. I yelled at somebody and I now I feel better. See, when I was uh, in high school, I remember driving down the street and I was so mad. Something my girlfriend did or something. 
and I punched my uh, my windshield and broke it. And I didn't feel better after that. I thought, I'm going to have to pay for this. For yeah. You don't <laughs> yeah. know how much stuff I've had to pay for. But what I'm saying is you feel better when you throw something, you, you mm-hmm. yell at somebody, you flip somebody off. And so you just have to find a healthier way to release that anger. It's got to yeah. come out. Uh, again, as I said earlier, suppressed anger can be destructive. Uh, it can be destructive uh, to your body physically and your yeah. mental stability. Well, I, I think that that, ha- that goes along with the verse of don't let the sun go down in your anger because right. if, if something happens, it, it does produce the response, the yeah. flight or flight or freeze or fawn, you know, that whole response. And it, that produces adrenaline and it makes you, like you said, your fists get hot. They get, yep. they, they, they get clenched. That's probably why they get hot because mm-hmm. the blood goes to them. And you have to do something with that energy or that energy becomes toxic yes. to your it system. It does become toxic. It'll, it'll just destroy you. Again, we need to seek to understand our trigger points for our anger and then set boundaries. Mm. That's called living in wisdom. For example, I, I want to know the areas that really you know push my buttons so I can avoid mm-hmm. them. I think that's part of, part of spiritual maturity. Uh, when someone gets in my face, I, I don't handle that well. And it might come back, it might go back, excuse me, to, you know, when I was younger, my dad was always in my face. And he was real mean to me, and it it kind of really broke me. Mm. So knowing that that's a trigger point for my anger, if I get into a situation now where I know someone's really, really mad at me, I try to avoid them as much as I can for two or three days till things settle down because I don't want to get myself into one of those situations. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Fox News is a trigger point. My wife said many times, why do you even watch it? <laughs> because I get really angry. Well, all the, uh, all the news. I can't. You know, our, yeah. whole, our whole media you know, system in the United States, maybe even worldwide, is built on rage. It's built on rage. They, they want you to be raging about something. Mm-hmm. Right, and if there's nothing to rage about, there's nothing to sell. There's no news, yeah. It's crazy, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, well, you know, one time a uh, a reality show had talked to us about doing a reality show about yeah. pastors of large churches that have their family working for them, <laughs> and they wanted they wanted there to be some turmoil. Yeah, they yeah. they asked us. They said, "Do you fight with each other a lot?" Because that's what they wanted the show to be about. Interesting. Uh, You'll but, send us articles, and I just went to the news stations, and a lot of the articles that you're angry about, you're like, "Can you believe this?" Is because it's injustices that are being done. I say that right, injustice that is being done to people um, that can't help it. You know, whether it's, it has to do with a top, you know, like, can you believe they're treating these people this way or that way? Yeah. You know, send us these articles. And, uh, and that's a lot of times well, what we live in sets a, you off. We live in a society <laughs> now where, you know, one group of people will believe one thing and another group of people sure. believe something else. And they will start hijacking the other group by doing things that are negative toward their own group. To just make you more angry, like it's it's right. crazy, it's it's right. wild. Yeah, you have to decide what it what what's out there that's worth being angry about. Yeah, sometimes I watch Fox News and I get angry about something, but then it gives me an idea. Let's right. go do this. Yep. you know, yeah. to 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 compensate for what's going on here. Mm-hmm. So boundaries. Um, when someone critiques me on Sunday, that's not a good time, and so I try to stay busy watching sports after I preach on Sunday, or or to do something to get my mind off. Well, of, you had a, you had a heckler last Sunday. I had a heckler stand up in the middle of a service and tell me to repent, and I kind of wished I would have let him stick around for a while because maybe I need to repent of something. <laughs> maybe he saw something that I didn't see. Yell back, be specific. But see, <laughs> on Sundays, we have a legitimate, a legitimate, a legitimate reason to to protect ourselves on yeah, Sunday yeah. because mm-hmm. you know we did, we're getting down from a dopamine high. Uh, when we preach, all kinds of hormones are being released in our body. I, uh, and on Sunday evening, you're coming down from that, and you try to avoid situations where people will critique you mm. and just get through Sunday evening. So Still to this day, and this has been the case for as long as I can remember, Sundays are nap days to me. Like It's like Sunday <laughs> afternoon is if nap time. If you can time, get them. Right? Yeah, if sure. you can, with little ones, you don't, right? Yeah. But. Uh, it just made, I always want to on Sundays. Yep. I, I never, I never get to, you're yep. right. The, with a three-year-old and a six-year-old, no way. But, uh, but you always feel that because yeah, it's like, it's like you're revved up, you're excited, good things are happening. And, and I think that that's like the ebb and flow of life. And I think that's what happens with us in this culture, because we are a culture of go, 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 do, 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 get as much stuff done as you can. We are a culture where we never allow for the down. 
Yeah. Ever. That's you never good. allow for the down. Yeah. And you have to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you your body needs a nap. One hundred percent. Sometimes you need to just, you know, Rest. sit on the porch yep. and, you know, mm-hmm. rock in a chair. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. And enjoy because with the weather being so nice, there have been a couple of times where after putting the kids to bed. It, I just tell Justin, I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to go and sit outside and just yeah. enjoy it. I know what I should do responsibly is probably go to bed, but the weather's never like Why this. Why did I, I imagine never get you to... playing a banjo doing that? Because you have a vivid imagination. Yeah. You're sitting there playing a banjo. But something that helps me as far as, you know, controlling my anger is is really deciding for myself what kind of person I want to be when I'm out in public. Because we've all seen those parents hmm that just pop off on their kids oh, right. or, you know, something happens, you know, and, and they're arguing well, out in public. There have been a couple of times where I've been pulling out of parking lots, seeing two couples talk to each other, and I'll drive past them slowly to be like, I hope that, that the wife is okay because the husband looks like he's yelling, yeah. you know? And just I would hate for that to ever happen for my wife and I. Like, you guys be driving past, like, the hardest thing for everything me, okay? The hardest thing for me, honestly, when I'm in the public, in public, is when I see a parent yelling at a kid yeah. mm-hmm. and losing it on a kid. Like yep. I'm just like, what are you doing? And yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. intervene, yep. but it's like not quite bad enough to be like illegal behavior. Right. But it's bad enough to be abusive. That's right. so hard. It's, it's Oh, it's so hard. Oh it's practice though, because I think a lot of people, you know, they expect like, well, how do you get out of these arguments or how do you, you know, how do you not make a public scene? And it starts within your home. And I think if you're having good habits yeah. and good practice in your home, if you're practicing responding well to your wife or your spouse, if you're practicing responding well to your kids, that stuff will naturally come out in public. Like I don't have to scream and yell at my kids and target or, and I'm not saying this to put myself, but I don't have to, because at home we've set boundaries on how we're going to live and not because of the way that we want to be seen, but the way that we want to conduct ourselves just in general at yeah. home. And so even at home, yes, my kids cry. They have, you know, we have a kitten in our house now. And now the big, you know, most of the fights about who, how long can I yeah, hold the kitten yeah. in the house? So yeah. my kids, you know, they're not perfect and we're not always perfect. Um, but they're able to resolve and practice that like, Hey, let's practice how much. Practice, so, yeah. so as you put, if you're expecting to control your anger or manage your anger and you never practice managing your anger, well, don't expect to be, any good at being able to respond in a great way when somebody makes you mad in public. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Literally the other night I, uh, this might've been last night. I can't remember when it was, but, uh, something happened where I had to discipline my son and I didn't do anything over the top. I didn't scream or anything like that. Literally just picked him up, sat him in his room, walked back and I went just in, was that okay? Like, was that an appropriate response? Because, you know, we just, you go through so much with raising these kids and you don't, you know, I learned early on, you do not spank your kid out of anger. And there've been so many times where just, I'm like, I'm getting ready, my hands lifted. And I go, yo, calm down. That's good. Yeah. And then let's handle this, you know, yeah, and yeah. I just because because you don't you I mean, because you'll take out what's happened at your job. You'll take out what's happened at your bank sure. account. You'll take, and you're <laughs> your just, bank account. you know, you're just t- giving you're it all, to this. My kid. French fries were cold. Boom. Yeah, exactly. Because and but people, <laughs> right. they will. You'll take it out on that or, sure. you know, or worse. You yeah. Know? Well, little kids, they uh, again, when they have that response of anger, they're, they're not even thinking straight. You can't. You can't negotiate with them. Right, you no. can't explain anything to them. So the best thing to do no. a lot of times, if you can, let them cool off. Pastor, same, same as with adults. Yeah. You yeah. probably, when you, you know, having Tara, you probably learned a lot from raising Tara than to raising Josh. Like you were like, oh man, it, some things I wish I would have done right with Tara. And then that, some of the stuff you got better with Josh. I know with like Huntington, you know, one time I remember he was like seven and he was just crying over something. I was like, yeah. And, and we didn't spank him. I just said, Okay, I just took him. It was like tw- it was like ten o'clock at night, and I just set him in the front porch, and I just shut the door. Yeah. He's like, "Let me back in." And is like, "Babe, you can't let him." I'm like, "Well, I don't know if if, if he thinks he wants to scream, so he immediately yeah. stops. Just silence, crickets, and wife's like, "That's not right." And so I open the door. He's like, "Could I come back in?" Yeah, um, but it was I like think I was probably a little bit harder than Tara. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're all predisposed to different emotional weaknesses, I think, because of the way we were raised, sure, the mm-hmm. way we're wired or whatever. Mm-hmm. But in the Christian life, it all comes comes down to self-discipline. Yeah. And that good. is a fruit of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. And so I have learned through the years that uh, I am just so dependent upon God and the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a good place to be. Yeah. I mean, daily I have to ask the Lord, you know, help me with my temper, help me with my emotions, help me with my tongue, help me to be a good husband, help me to be a good father. 
I mean, the older you get in Christ, the more dependent you become on him. And so I think it just all boils down to what Jesus said in John, that apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm. You know, it's uh, my power in you. You talk about fruit of the Spirit, and that reminds me of a literal fruit tree I have in my yard. And just about six months ago, I I just murked that tree. I cut it up. So I, 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 I really, I mean, I took pruning to the next level on that tree to the point where it was just a couple sticks uh, poking up. Mm-hmm. But now today, it has a ton of, of good, healthy fruit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not a ton, actually. It has a good amount of, of good, healthy fruit. And my wife uh, was, and I were both surprised at how much it grew back, but the idea of pruning yeah. in the season that you need to prune, taking away responsibility, taking away mm-hmm. pressures, taking away things before they become issues to make you angry is also biblical and really important. Well, you'll do. find this yeah. kind of funny. Before I left today, your mother, Josh, looked at me and says, are you okay? I said, no, I'm angry about having to go talk about anger because <laughs> I really don't want to talk about it because uh, uh, mm-hmm. it was a problem of mine for years, my early years. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think I'm an angry person at all now. I'm a passionate person. It's a little different, mm. but I don't see the anger there much at all because I've learned through Christ's power how to, uh, you know, rechannel my anger mm-hmm. and how to uh, have discipline over it. Uh, I have to discipline myself a lot. And something that people might need to know too with what you said in regards to the fruit of the Spirit. God wants us to be good fathers, to be good men. He doesn't only God doesn't only want us to go out and constantly evangelize and and constantly uh, uh, hold these crusades or whatever people think God wants them to do. He does care about you being good in your home, behind the scenes, and for you to say prayers like, "Father, help me to be a better husband. Help mm-hmm. me to be a better dad, a better coworker." Um, someone who doesn't lash out, you know, constantly help me to be better yeah. in controlling my anger. <clears throat> God wants that for you as well. I thought, I thought that was that's, a good point. No, I good. have to start every day at the altar every day. And I've got to go back there two or three times a day. So I think now the key to, uh, my ability to uh, grow up a little bit in this world has been just to stay close to Christ. Mm-hmm. I have to stay very close to him. Tom, mm-hmm. talking about your own homes, my wife and I are both very passionate people. And uh, when we fight, we fight, you know, and uh, we, we try not to fight in front of the kids. But the other day we were, our voices were being raised because we were both standing our ground on something. Sure. And uh, who was right? You know, who knows? But she we was. were probably her, yeah. uh, you know, yes, <laughs> Vince knows us. Uh, but, but, but my little girl comes in and she puts her hands between us and says, stop it right now. Stop, stop. What mm. are you doing? Stop. Wow. And it's heartbreaking, but it's also, it was also a good point a good moment, first of all, to break up our energy, right? But it was also a moment for us to explain. And my wife jumped straight in. She's like, are you guys fighting? And my wife said, we are disagreeing. We are disagreeing right now, just like you and your sister do, but we are working it out. And so she was able to see us work out our conversation. You know, it didn't Mm -hmm. go to level 10. It just, you know, we were, we were both standing our ground in, in, in the moment and she was able to see us work it out. And I think that that was a huge example for her sure. to realize that next time I'm fighting with my sister, I can work this out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, there's when if you are in a family where if you're in a family where no one ever disagrees, you know, you're probably in a pretty laid back, different type of family. And that's yeah. great. That's awesome. But most families have opinions. Uh, yeah. Members have opinions and you'll fight, you know, yeah. but. If, it, it depends on where you land, not where you take off, right, uh, mm-hmm. from. I, well, I was raised in an Italian family, and they would uh, all get together, and they would fight with one another. They would argue. They would soon uh, start speaking in Italian, so we couldn't <laughs> hear what they were saying. But, I mean, they would just go to it for a solid hour, and then they would all go in and eat dinner together, and everything yeah. was fine. That's well, some people are just did. different. My uh, Vince and I and another friend were together. Who we we hang out a lot, and then another guy that's not really part of our group was with us, and we were just yelling at each other and arguing though, like for like an hour. <laughs> and he just looked at us. He was like, "What are you guys from Boston or something? Yeah. What's going on?" I was like, "This is how we are. Yeah. You know, this is just we are kind of passionate people, and we could offend people that aren't like yes, that, right? For sure. We don't mean to, yeah, yeah. but we just talk." I- I want to go back to a hybrid of what you said and what Tom said, because I think it matches. You kind of talked about pruning, and then you talked about God wanting you to be a good father. And you said sometimes, you know, the crusade or the thing that you think is good um, is stopping you from actually being who God has called you to be in the household because Mm -hmm. some of that good stuff. And I think when you prune, and I'm sure when you, you can talk about this, Josh, when you're pruning a tree, 
it's hard to cut off the good green leaves. It's hard to cut off the stuff that looks good. Yeah, it right. really is because you're like, this is real. Like, are you, am I supposed to cut this one? It's like yeah. that's too much. Like, how far do I go? And sometimes, in order, and this goes right into the root of anger, you might have a lot of stuff that you think is really good, but you ha- you're holding too much in your plate, or you're holding too much in your life. And a lot of your anger, your emotional instability is coming from just having too much on your tree because there's only so much fruit that you can produce that you're able to eat and store away, right? Because yeah. it, the rest of it's just going to fall away and be Spoil, wasted. Yeah. It's going to be spoiled. So if you have all this fruit on your tree and it's spoiling, then what are you doing? So there's only so much that you can do and, con- and control or manage. And if you're doing too much, that could be a root of just being out of control or having your emotional, you know, these emotional distress moments, you know? Right. Right. So you know what, you guys, we're going to probably close this thing a little earlier than usual today, but I want to give you some final thoughts about anger. Number one is when you find yourself really, really being angry, ask yourself two questions. Uh, Why am I angry? First, find out why. And then secondly, what am I supposed to do with it to to make this a productive thing? Yeah. Uh, Understand the sinful anger. It doesn't work for you. It's not going to work for you. It's not going to be good for you. If you are in the habit of throwing things and yelling and screaming and flipping people off, just understand that in the long run, that's not going to work for you. It's not going to be productive. Uh, And then next, uh, be determined to control your anger. Be determined that you're going to control it by God's power. You need a supernatural power to help you control it. Understand that it's a habit. Anger can be a habit. Um, You know, if you're an angry person, it's because you're thinking angry thoughts all the time. If you're a lustful person, it's because you're thinking lustful thoughts all the time. Mm. And so change your thoughts, and you will change your problem with anger. At least you'll you'll uh, re-channel it. You'll you'll reconfigure it. Uh, Pray a lot. Learn to vent to God, and if you have to, vent to one or two good friends. But vent in such a way that it doesn't turn into gossip. Just say, I'm really angry right now, and can I just tell you, uh, I, I'm having these feelings right now, and could you pray for me? That's venting, uh, and and rely on God more than you ever have before. Uh, we're tired today, at least I am, and we're all going on vacation. We're going different directions. So this is going to be our last broadcast until August. I think, uh, what's the date we're going to bring? August 8th. August, yep. August 8th, we're coming back. Yep, Tuesday, so August mark 8th. it on your calendar, August 8th, we're coming back. We're going to take a break, and uh, there's 42 other episodes you can listen to, go back, and find your favorite ones, and maybe even suggest that other people listen to them. Yeah. And then we'll be back with fresh new topics on August 8th. So you guys want to add anything before we go about anger or anything else? If you guys have topic ideas too, I would love to hear those in the YouTube comments. You guys can drop ideas, things that we didn't cover in the first 42 episodes that you would love us to talk about. Leave those um, in the comments. You can also um, leave comments on YouTube and on Spotify. And then also you have access to Pastor Ron and our guys, our emails. If you guys want to get a hold of us through the summer, um, we're going to miss you. We're going to miss this as much as you're going to miss us. And so we look forward to come back, coming back August 8th with just a bunch of new content and just a really just refreshing um, podcast. Yep. Got anything else? No, I think that's it. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. We will see you back here, uh, wherever you are, I guess. that's uh, we're, we're, You're not going to be here in our space, but you know what I mean. Yeah. We'll see you back on the podcast August 8th, and uh, we love you guys. Thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, for you, take a break. Chill. Relax. Go on vacation. Enjoy your vacation. Yep. Enjoy Learn your rest, summer. right? Prune that tree. All right. Love you guys. Love, love you. Bless. Love you. You got your daddy's ring. You're like a piece of heaven.